Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Matter and Energy, Level 5, Cycles and Flows. You can see in this video that we're going to be looking at matter and energy in a system. And that's always the first place you want to go, is you want to define the system that you're going to be investigating. First thing we'll talk about is matter and how matter in a system can cycle, how it can move in one direction and come back to where it was before. And then more importantly, we're going to start thinking about energy and how does energy and the flow of energy drive the cycling of matter. And so matter cycles, energy flows, sometimes matter can flow. The objects that represent that are going to be the solid black cube, which represents matter. Matter just is what things are made up of, and it can cycle. It could go from here to here to here and back to here. But we know that matter just doesn't move on its own. It requires energy, and this red ball represents that energy or the flow of energy that can move that matter from one place to another. After watching this video, you should be able to look at matter cycling and energy flow in something like a dual path marble run or inside a cell as we look at matter cycling and energy flow in the chloroplast and the mitochondria. I'm going to start by showing you my thinking as we look at a single path marble run and then you'll have a chance to do the same with a game of backgammon. So let me get this out of the way and let's watch that marble run. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to define the system. Now this is a single path marble run because I have put some tape on it right here. So the marbles, when they come up at the top, can only go in one direction. They go down through these S turns and then they go through this feature. I'm calling it the toilet bowl before they're lifted by this wheel and eventually these stairs. So let's watch the matter cycle and the energy flow. Okay, so let me get that out of the way, and then let's bring back our system board. You can see I lost one of the marbles out of the system. But the first thing I want to do is now I want to set up this as my system. So this is the system that we're going to investigate. This is my single path marble run. And I want to write down the major features that I saw in that. So I'm going to divide my board into four parts. So like that and like that. And two of the big features that I saw, we could bring back a photograph of this so we can see it. Um, the big features that I saw are the wheel. So there's a wheel that turns and that lifts the marbles up. And then there's this staircase. So I'm just going to write those down on my model here. So we'll call this the wheel. What are the other big features that I saw? There were these S turns as the marbles went down. And then there's this toilet bowl. Next step, I'm going to start looking at the matter. So what's the matter that's moving around? Well, the matter that's moving around are going to be the marbles. So let me write down the marbles and where they existed in the system. Okay, so as we look at the matter, the matter is the marbles that are actually moving around. And they were found in all four of those different features. Next thing I might want to do is write down a key. A key is important when you're modeling. And so I'm going to show that the arrow represents matter moving. So this is the matter moving. We'll make that our key right down here. So the marble from the wheel is lifted to the stairs. And then it eventually goes to the S turns and then it eventually goes down the toilet bowl and it eventually goes back into the wheel again. And so what am I showing on my model here? What I'm really showing is matter cycles. Matter is going from here to here to here to here, but it's the same marbles that keep going around and around and around. So we would call this matter cycling or the cycling of matter. But it doesn't just work on its own. Remember, I had to crank this to get it going. And so we have to start thinking about energy. What What's the energy that's actually lifting those marbles up? Well, that came from me. And so that energy started with my hand. So I'm going to write hand down here. So we could call that motion energy. So my hand provides motion energy to a crank. And then that motion energy of the wheel and the stairs is going to lift the marble. And so I could say this is motion energy. So I'm going to put this off to the side and this arrow represents the transfer of energy from my hand 
into the marble. So the red represents the movement or the motion of uh, the object, and so we'll just have that over here. I also want to add that to my key. So we're going to call that energy. Anything that's in red is going to be energy that's moving. And then if we look at like why does the marble come down, why does it come down through the S-turns? Well, that's going to be another type of energy. And so we could kind of draw that in this way. And that's going to be gravity. So gravity is providing that energy as well. So I could write gravity provides that energy. And I'm going to put that right here. And so what do we now have? We have a model that shows how the matter is cycling and how the energy flows. You can see that that energy, when it gets back to the end, doesn't go back into my hand again. So we wouldn't say that energy is cycling. We would call that energy flow. And so what's driving this is the motion of my hand drives the motion of the wheel and the stairs that lift the marble and then they recycle back down again and that is we call that gravitational potential energy that's pulling it down. So that's our first one. This is matter cycling and energy flow. What I'm going to do is reset this again and I'll give you the same example or a rather a different example of a game of backgammon and you're going to try to show matter cycling or matter flow and the flow of energy that drives that process. Okay, for the next example, we're gonna use a game of backgammon that my wife and I played. And so first thing we wanna do is define the system. So in this case, the system is going to be the backgammon board. Uh, and what we'll do is just watch a quick um, time lapse of this. To, if you don't know how to, how to play backgammon, we just learned you have a white home and a black home. And your goal, if you're white, is to get all of your white pieces back to your white home. And black is the opposite. And we call this out here the outer board. So you can see um, when we start playing, it takes us a while to kind of start moving those pieces. But then what you'll eventually see is the white are coming towards the white home and the black is coming towards the black home. And you can also see that my wife beats me because she gets all of her pieces outside the board uh, before the game is over. And so let me get this out of the way um, and set up the system. Okay, the way I've set up the system is I've had the white home in this quadrant, the black home down here, and then the outer corresponding outer boards that are here. So what I'd love to have you do is take a second to use the thinking slides below or watch the video and use a piece of paper. And I want you to show what is matter doing? What's the matter cycling or matter flow? And what's the energy that's driving that process? And then when you're totally done, come back and we'll share our thinking. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the pieces. Where were the pieces at? And then how are the pieces going to move? I also should add a key at this point. And now I'm gonna show where the matter goes, so how the matter flows. So here I've shown the matter in black and the energy is going to be in red. We can see that the white pieces, which started on all four quadrants, eventually end up outside of the system. If we look at the black pieces, which were in all four quadrants, they eventually end up, not all of them, but most of them end up outside of the system. And now the next thing that I have to do is I have to start thinking about what's driving that process. Actually, before that, we could say at this point that matter is not cycled. In other words, there's no cycling back. So a better way to say this would be what I'm showing on my model is matter flow. So it's all just moving in one direction. Next thing I want to do is start thinking about the energy. What's the energy that's actually driving that? I think you could answer this maybe in a couple of ways. Let me show you what I was thinking. So 
So what I'm trying to show on my model is the energy actually of movement comes from the dice. When I, sh when I roll the dice, the white dice, depending on what letters I get, actually is what's making my white pieces move or making the black pieces move. You could also say that that energy comes from your physically your hand that's moving them. I think that's another way to think about it. But I would say on this system, the matter is flowing and now the energy is flowing as well. Once I quit rolling the dice, then there's not going to be motion. So this is me showing like my thinking around matter and energy, just using the backgammon game. What you could do now is I've got a couple of thinking slides below. You could do a more complex system. We've got a dual path uh, marble run, or you could do uh, matter cycling and energy flow in a mitochondria and chloroplast. For me, what I find, it's easiest to start with the matter. Like, what is the system? Where does the matter go? And then what's driving it? What's the energy that drives that process? So that's thinking in matter and energy, cycles and flows, uh, level five, and I hope that was helpful.